Hi everyone, Gene here. Before we jump into today's podcast, I just wanted to give you a heads up. Last week's podcast, Podcast 299, about setting intentions in the new year, is a podcast that I received a really high number of emails about people who really loved it. And I just point that out that if you missed it, it's something that you might want to go back to. It's a really simple way to start your day with simple intentions that's going to help you to be more productive without overwhelming yourself with a bunch of new tasks on your to-do list. All you need to do is go to tappingqandapodcast.com, click on the link for episode 299. You can find an audio tap along as well as the written out script so you can print it out and tap whenever you want. Now on to today's show. This is Gene Montrose telling welcome to the Tapping Q&A podcast recorded live to tape from Williamsburg in Brooklyn. This is episode 300 originally aired January 10th, 2018. Hi, everyone. I hope this finds you well wherever you are and whatever time of day you're getting a chance to listen to this. Thanks for spending some time with me today. Today, we're going to talk about commitments and what it's like to quit on one of those commitments and what that does to us emotionally as we try and wrestle with that. Before we jump into that, I wanted to remind you that the Tapping Q&A podcast archive is full of all sorts of amazing resources that are just waiting for you. You heard me a few moments ago saying that this was episode 300 of the podcast. Actually, this is episode 353 of the podcast because there's been a bunch of bonus episodes, there were two-part episodes, and there were episodes that didn't get an episode number. What that means is there's over 160 hours of free tapping content waiting for you on every issue under the sun. So if you're looking for some help and you don't know where to start, go to tappingqnapodcast.com and just scroll through that list or type a topic into the search box and you will find a number of really amazing resources that are waiting for you absolutely free of charge. So today we're going to spend some time talking about and tapping around letting go of commitments that are no longer useful. And there's this tension that exists between wanting to live up to our word and letting go of things that are no longer useful. And how this topic came about was because of a conversation that I had on Monday. I work out of a co-working space a couple of days a week. And what a co-working space is, is it's an office building, but instead of renting an entire office, all you do is you rent a desk. And, and the reason they exist, particularly here in New York City, is the renting an office is so expensive, it's really difficult. So by going to a co-working space for a lot less money, you get everything you need. So when I go to the co-working space, which is a couple of times a week, my desk is situated in a room in which seven other small businesses have desks in there as well. And so it's bringing costs down for everyone by doing it that way. And because I spend time in this space and I've been in this space for a while, I've gotten to know the other small businesses. And every morning, you know, we just check in with each other and see how life is going. And on Monday, I was talking to one of the guys in my co-working space, and he said something really interesting. He was talking about the frustration that he's feeling right now because he's running a startup that he's trying to get funded. He's doing a bunch of side projects to pay his bills as a freelancer, and he's working on his Ph.D., and he was talking about how much he hated the work on his Ph.D. and how time-consuming it was. And so I asked him, well, why do you keep doing it? And he said, I always finish everything I start, which I thought was a really interesting phrase. And so I started asking him some questions if this was always true and why it was the case. And his reasoning was... If I quit something that I have committed to now, then what I am doing is I am setting myself up for failure in the future because I'm not going to live up to my word in the future. So therefore, I finish everything I start, which I don't think is necessarily the healthiest approach to have. Because there are a number of things that we do when we started with good intentions seemed like a really great idea. And today they no longer are good ideas. Either we made a bad choice. We thought making the commitment and doing this thing was going to give us something that was really useful, and we realize that's not actually the case. Or we thought 
we were going to get a very specific return on doing whatever it's we're doing, whatever task that we're committing to. But now we're realizing it takes so much more time and so much more energy and so much more effort that it's not actually a good idea. The return that we're getting on the investment of our time and our money isn't going to make it worthwhile. Or we simply could be in a situation where we've changed and we've evolved. And even though the thing that we had committed to was really valuable at the time, it's not anymore because we are a different person standing at a different place in our lives. And this natural tension shows up inside of that. On one hand, we get to what my fellow coworker was saying about Worrying that if I stop doing this, then I'm setting myself up for failure in the future because I'm giving myself permission to quit. On the other side, there's investment and time and energy and resource into something that doesn't serve us anymore. And so when we have that internal struggle going on, oftentimes what we do is we end up spending too much time and too much effort in something that doesn't bear fruit But because we know it's not going to bear fruit, we don't do it full out. So now, not only are we working on something that isn't going to be good for us, we're doing it in a half-measure way, which means it's going to take even longer for us to get through it. So we're investing time in something that is unuseful, and we're taking way too much time to get that done. So today what I want to do is I want to spend a little time tapping along to help create that space, to be able to deal with that resistance and still be able to let go of the things that are no longer helpful and healthful. And at the beginning of the year, as we talked about last week with intentions and resolutions, as important as it is for us to pick up things that are useful, I think it's just as productive to let go of the things that no longer serve us. So take a nice big deep breath for me. Tap on the side of the hand. Take another nice big deep breath. Keep tapping on the side of the hand. And just tap from tapping point to tapping point in the way that makes sense for you. And just repeat after me. I don't want to be seen as a quitter. I want my word to mean something. I want my commitments to mean something. I want the people around me to take me seriously when I make a commitment. And there is a part of me that is afraid that if I do not follow through on my commitments, then I'm going to be seen as a quitter. I'm going to be seen as a quitter by other people. And I'm going to see myself as a quitter. And I am afraid the moment I let myself out of a commitment, I am setting a precedent for the future in which I'm going to let myself out of all future commitments. But I recognize the fact that it is possible for me to clearly look at the commitments I have made and make the decision to let go of the commitments that no longer serve me. To let go of the commitments that are no longer helpful for me. To let go of the commitments that are no longer healthy for me. I am able to do this because I recognize I 
I now have new information about the commitment. And I have new information about myself. And I recognize the fact the commitment is no longer a good fit for me. Letting go of this commitment is not a failing. Letting go of this commitment does not mean I am a quitter. Instead, I am making a commitment to using my time, attention, and energy in a way that is so much more productive for me. By letting go of the commitments that no longer serve me, I am creating the space and the capacity to make good, healthy choices in this moment. Allowing me to commit to the things that serve me. Allowing me to commit to the things that are healthy for me. Allowing me to commit to me in the best possible way. Letting go of commitments is not quitting. It's choosing a new, better future. Nice big deep breath. And I have a feeling that there are a number of you who just tapped through that, that there was a huge amount of resistance inside of there. Because this idea of being steadfast in our commitments and not quitting is a cultural belief that is woven so deep. Even though you don't know Vince Lombardi said it, you know the quote, winners never quit and quitters never win. It's this thing that, that really is deep inside of our cultural identity, particularly those who are born and live in the West. And so if you encountered a huge amount of resistance inside of that, that is clear that you need to go back and tap through this again and again and again until that resistance starts to release. Um, on the website, I have a version of the tapping script if you don't want to come back to this audio. Or if you download the tapping Q&A app, I include all of the tapping scripts in the app. So you don't have to go into the audio, but you can just go to the text session and you're able to tap along to it. If you know someone who could use this little work that we did right here, please, please, please be our ambassador. Pass it along. Like I said earlier, this is a great compliment to Podcast 299. You can find this, that, and all all of our old episodes at tappingqnapodcast.com. Like I said, there's over 160 hours of free resources just waiting for you. You can subscribe to this podcast in Apple Podcasts, in Spotify, in Stitcher, in TuneIn, in Google Music Play, and all sorts of places. Also, if you're on an Android device, if you go to tappingqna.com slash Android, I have a little video there showing you how you can subscribe on an Android phone because it's not something that you can do in one step like you can do on an Apple device. If you have any questions, if you have any comments, or if you have something you'd like us to cover in the future, please let us know. I always, always love hearing from listeners just like you. You can email me directly at gene, G-E-N-E, at tappingqna.com. You can click on the contact link on the website, or if you have the Tapping Q&A app, click on the contact section. There you can leave me a voicemail, or you can send me an email from right inside of the app. For the Tapping Q&A podcast, this is Gene Montrestelli. I hope you have a great day, and I will talk to you real soon. Bye-bye. The Tapping Q&A podcast is copyright. Gene Monterostelli, Tapping Q&A 2016. All views expressed by guests are those of the guests and not necessarily of Gene Monterostelli or Tapping Q&A.